Well, hey everyone, God bless you. This is Fred Kropp coming to you from the Healing Rooms Apostolic Center here in Santa Maria, California. And today, this is part two of breaking the power of curses. And today, we're actually going to break curses over your life. Uh, if you want to find out all that I taught, you can go back to my last uh, message or you can go to my YouTube channel, which is Fred Kropp, K R O P P, and you'll find the recorded. Uh, teaching from last session on where curses come from. So we're going to get jump right in here. And uh, I just want to uh, explain to you first again, I want to kind of do a little bit of review because it's been over a week uh, since I've been able to speak to you. And uh, let's talk about what is curses. What are curses? Curses are words spoken that have a negative effect or impact over the person or person's they have been spoken over. Curses can even be put upon cities or countries and so on. Uh, there, many years ago, there were uh, uh, there were leaders in the country of Haiti. If you've ever been to Haiti, it's one of the most hor horrible places you could ever go to. And the leadership uh, in that country many years ago pronounced a curse, a uh, demonic curse over the country. And guess what? They've been reaping the results of that for many, many years. And, I believe God can deliver you, even if you're in Haiti, from the power of those curses. So what are the sources? There are four sources of curses. This is all review. First, there are curses that come from God. And I talked about that in the last session. There are curses that come from disobedience to the law. That's right. And there's curses that come through others. That's the one people are most familiar with, witchcraft curses or people pronouncing curses uh, in from satanic rituals and things like that. And then the fourth way that curses come is we speak curses over ourselves. Again, you can go back to my last teaching and you can catch up on all that. Also, I just want to go over again, what are the indicators of that we may have a curse in our life? Well, there are certain signs. In fact, again, as I mentioned in the last session, you want to go to Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28 is all about the blessings and the curses. The first 14 verses of Deuteronomy 28 talk about what happens when you keep the law or you hear the voice of the Lord and you obey it absolutely perfectly. These blessings will come upon you. Then the next like 50 verses or more, talk about the curses that come upon a person or a people group that do not obey the voice of the Lord. So you can go back and read Deuteronomy 28. Let's pray, and I'll, I'll give you some of the things that it indicates in Deuteronomy 28, which may indicate you might have a curse in your life. So Father, I thank you right now for your word. I thank you that we aren't in the dark, but we're in the light. We thank you for the spirit of revelation. And even now, we're going to have insight. We're going to see blinders removed. We're going to see um, things broken over our lives today. Lies that the enemy has spoken to us are going to be broken today because we're going to expose them with the light of your word. I thank you for everyone that's watch watching and those that will be watching this video. I pray that you will help them to understand they do not have to be under a curse anymore. They can be under the blessing of Abraham. God, I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Those of you that are joining me on Facebook, make sure you click share. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. When you get there, click the bell so you won't miss any of these messages. So what are some of the indicators that your life might be under a curse? Well, here's some of the things. One would be mental or emotional breakdown, especially if it's chronic or long-term, long-term depression. Those could be a sign that you're, there's a curse over your life. Another one would be repeated or chronic sicknesses, especially if they're hereditary. In other words, coming down from generation to generation. If you see those things, it could be there's a curse upon your family or your bloodline. Here's another one, barrenness or a tendency to miscarry, or related female problems. Now, not all barrenness is caused by a curse, but it could be that there's a curse that's activated in your family background. Here's another one, breakdown of marriage and family alienation. So we look at it in America, and even in the church today, we see that 
50% or more supposedly of marriages in the church end up in, in divorce. Why? Maybe it's because they don't know how to deal with the, this whole area of curses and curses are working in our families and we need to understand what the Bible says of how we can have authority and break curses. Come on, somebody, say amen to that. Here's another indicator that we might have a curse, and that is continuing financial insufficiency. We're always, we never have enough. We're always coming up short. There's a, you know, one of the signs of a curse is poverty coming upon a person or a people group. That could be an indicator there's a curse working in your life. Another one would be being accident prone, always having accidents over and over again. You, you, you keep saying, you know, uh, these bad things keep happening to me over, over, over and over again. It could be the result of a curse, a curse maybe you've even spoken over your own life that's been activated there over you. And then finally, another one is a history of suicides and unnatural or untimely deaths. So these are the things that could indicate that you may have a curse that is uh, working in your life. Now, here's an interesting scripture. For those of you that are joining me, I'm talking about breaking the power of curses. And we're going to be doing that today at the end of this teaching. So don't leave now. Make sure you stick through. I'm going to talk about how Jesus has provided for us the way to renounce and break any curse that would be over our life. But here's an interesting scripture. Proverbs 26, 2. Proverbs 26, 2 says this, like a sparrow in its flitting, like a swallow, like a bird swallow in its flying, so a curse without a cause does not alight. Let me read that one again. Like a sparrow in its flitting, like a swallow in its flying, so a curse without a cause does not alight. So in other words, a, a curse that doesn't, there has to be a cause for a curse to be able to come and land on your life. And so I want to talk to you now and just take a few minutes to talk about what are some of the things that would open our lives up to a curse. So there's probably several things, but I'm going to get hit the highlight, the ones that are most obvious, okay? So what would, uh, what would open us up to a curse? Well, first off, pride and arrogance. Proverbs 16, verse 18 says, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. So if, if you and I, what is pride? Pride is self-dependence, or it's thinking we're better than other people. Uh, and uh, so when we function in pride, we open ourselves up to getting a curse on our life. Here's another one, another way that curses can come and stay in our life. Deliberate, habitual, unrepented of sin. In Hebrews chapter 10, verses 26 and 27, it says, For if we go on sinning deliberately after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there, are, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a fearful expectation of judgment and a fury of fire that will consume the adversaries. So when we, again, I'm not saying that, we use, uh, hey, I've sinned, and, I, and I've sinned the same way a number of times. Maybe it's because you don't understand that you're dead to sin but if you willfully choose to continue in sin after having turned your life over to Jesus, if you do that, you can open yourself up to a curse coming on your life. Now, here's a sure way. The next one is a sure way to bring a curse on your life, and that is any involvement with the occult. That's right. Any involvement or engagement with the supernatural world outside of the teachings of the Bible with God or any, any relationship with anything outside of God the Father, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus Christ, then if you are involved in any of those things, some other spirit from the, a voice that's talking to you, if you touch the occult, if you're involved in uh, fortune telling, you're involved in reading your, uh, you know, your, um, what do they call it, astrology predictions, those kind of things, or you're involved in any kind of witchcraft, anything outside of the parameters of what God has put in the Bible, then you are touching a, you're touching, you're touching the occult. And if you touch the occult, then guess what? You're going to directly open yourself up to a curse on your life. Deuteronomy 18 verses 8 to 10 
says this, there shall not be found among you anyone who burns his son or daughter as an offering, anyone who practices divination or tells fortunes or interprets omens or a sorcerer or a charmer, a medium or a necromancer or anyone who inquires of the dead. For whoever does these things is an abomination to the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord your God is driving them out. Talking about the peoples that were inhabiting the land, uh, the Canaan land before the Israelites went in, they were all involved in the occult. And so God says that if you're involved in that, it is an abomination to God. And guess what? It opens you right up to, I don't know, if you're getting into, you know, uh, looking into crystals and fortune telling of any kind, predicting the future outside of prophetic words from the Lord, things like that, you automatically open yourself up to a curse. And we're, but we're going to deal with that today. Those of you that are joining me, I'm talking about breaking curses in your life. And right now I'm talking about things that open you up to having a curse come on your life because the Bible says that a curse without a cause cannot align. So I mentioned a couple of them already, pride and arrogance, deliberate habitual sin, any involvement in the occult. And here's another way that we open ourselves up to curses, and that is through unforgiveness. So Jesus said this in Matthew chapter 6, verses 14 and 15. He said, if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses or your sins. And so holding unforgiveness in our life is another way that we allow curses to come on our life. Here's another one, and that is what the Bible calls the sins of the fathers. There can be a curse on the bloodline of your family that goes down from generation to generation. In Exodus chapter 34, verses 6 and 7, it says this, the Lord passed before him, talking about, uh, it's talking about Moses when God came and passed by Moses, and he, and he says, and the Lord passed before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for thousands and forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, who will by no means clear the guilty, visiting, listen to this, visiting the iniquity of the father's on the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation. Now, iniquity is the propensity to sin, which could be, again, because of the curse of a law, where you're trying to keep the law and you can't keep the law. That's why we need Jesus in our life. But if you, like, I'm going to be a good person, but there is a generational curse that is come that is coming down from generation to generation. Well, how do I recognize it? Well, look at, are there, are there, things that are harmful things in your family background, in your parents, your grandparents, your great-grandparents? Do you see uh, any li- uh, you know, line of things? Like in my family, uh, my, you know, I, I didn't know who my gra- great-grandfather was, but my grandfather was a severe, and grandmother were both severe alcoholics. My dad was an alcoholic, and guess what? I became a drug addict. So there we have a curse that's coming down from generation to generation. Again, good news. We can break that curse, but that's one of the ways we open ourselves up to a curse is through what the Bible calls the sins of the fathers visiting the children to the third and fourth generation. Here's another way that we open ourselves up to a curse, and that is through having a judgmental or critical spirit. Here's what Paul says. He says, every one of you who judges, he says, you have no excuse, O man, every one of you who judges, For in passing judgment on another, you condemn yourself, because you, the judge, practice the very same things. We know that judgment, the judgment of God, rightly falls on those who practice such things. Do you not suppose, O man, that you who judge those who practice such things, and yet you do them yourself, that you will escape the judgment of God? So when you are judgmental and critical, you open yourself up to a curse. Here's another one that kind of a standout in the Bible. I've never heard anybody talk about it this way. But in Acts chapter 5, we have the story of Ananias and Sapphira, his wife. And so people were bringing money to Peter and laying at his feet. And there was a man named 
Ananias and his wife Sapphira. And this is Acts chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. It says they sold a piece of property that they owned, and they both agreed, and they kept back some of the money that they made from selling the property, and they brought only part of it and laid it at the apostles' feet. Now, it wasn't that they could have gave any amount they want. It wasn't that they didn't have the right to do that. It's that when they brought the money, they must have indicated this, this is the full amount of what we got from the land. And so then he, Peter gets a, word, gets a word of knowledge, and he says to Ananias, he says, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back for yourself part of the proceeds of the land? While it remained unsold, did it not remain your own? And after it was sold, was it not at your disposal? Why is it that you have contrived this deed in your heart? You have not lied to man, but to God. When Ananias heard these words, he fell down and breathed his last, and great fear came upon all who heard. And later, his wife came, not knowing what happened. Peter asked her the same questions, and they had agreed together to lie to God, or to make something look like it wasn't what it really was. And so they, I would say, dropping dead right on the spot is a pretty good indicator that there was a curse involved in that situation. So those are some of the ways that we open ourselves up to curses uh, being able to come upon our lives. Pride and arrogance, deliberate habitual sin, any involvement in the occult is an automatic unforgiveness, sins of the fathers, judgmental critical spirit, and lying to the Holy Spirit. Now, here's the good news. For those of you that are joining me on Facebook, I'm talking about that we about how to break curses over your life. So we talked about some of the ways that we open up ourselves to curses. So here it is. What how do we what is the what is the authority that or, or the what is the thing that brings us the power to break curses? Well, it's found in Galatians chapter 3 verse 13. Here's what it says. This is the Apostle Paul, Galatians 3, 13 and 14. He writes and says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of a law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is anyone who hangs on a tree. Now, what it's talking about is referring back in the Old Testament when people, when people were executed for murder or for some crime that was worthy of death, they would hang them up, but they would always take them down before the sun went down because it would bring a curse on the land. And so there was a curse that would be if you hung somebody like on a tree or on, in Jesus' case, on the cross, that indicated that that person was a curse and would bring a curse. And so here, Galatians 3, 13 and 14 says, Christ has redeemed us. Can you put your name in there? Christ has redeemed Fred. God, Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law because he became a curse for us. Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. So when Jesus died on the cross, it was more than just dying for our sins. Literally, he became a curse so that we might be set free from the curse. The next verse says, verse 14, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So Jesus became a curse for us so we can break the curse, and now we can release the blessing of Abraham. The Bible says Abraham was blessed in every area of his life. So now we talked about, here's God's provision. God's provision is that Jesus took our curse and curses upon himself that we might be set free and have authority to renounce and break curses over our lives. If you are in Christ, if you are a follower of Jesus, God has given you authority to break curses over you. And if, if you're a parent, if you're a father and a mother, you have power to break curses over your family, and you can break generational curses, all right? So what are the steps to breaking curses? Well, I'll give you seven different steps uh, for, break, actually eight steps for breaking curses. How many of you are ready? First off, you need to understand 1 Timothy 6.12 says to fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on the eternal life to which you've been called. And it says, and you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In Romans 10.10, 10, it says, for with the heart one believes unto righteousness 
or right standing with God, but with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. The word salvation there is a word that means to be set free, healed, restored. And so the way we get set free from curses is that we're going to verbalize. We're going to say something out loud that's going to break the curse. Remember, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it shall eat the fruit thereof. And so I'm in just a moment, I'm going to lead you in a prayer of breaking curses. And when I lead you in that prayer, I want you to agree with me, at least by saying amen along the way, and say it out loud. So here are some steps to break curses in your life. Number one, confess your faith in Christ and his sacrifice on your behalf. So we just learned Jesus became a curse for me, so I can confess, you know what, I believe in Jesus, and he became a curse for me on the cross. Here's the second thing you do. Repent of all your rebellion and your sins. If you have sins that you have not repented for in your life right now, I'm going to lead you in a prayer of repentance, where you're going to repent of those sins. Here's another one. Claim forgiveness of all sins. The Bible says if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Here's another one. Here's something that will hold you back from being free if you don't deal with this, and that is forgive all people who ever harmed you or wronged you or offended you or abused you. Let me say that one again. Forgive all people that ever harmed you, wronged you, abused you, offended you, because if we don't forgive People, their trespasses, Jesus said, our Father will not forgive us. And so I want one of the keys to getting set free is to not have any unforgiveness uh, in your heart, all right? And you can do it. You can forgive. It's not, a, it's not a feeling. It's a choice of our will. The fifth thing, that is renounce all contact with anything occultic or satanic. So if you have touched anything occultic in your life that you've never renounced before, this is your opportunity to renounce that. And remember, when you touch the occult, you directly open up yourself to demonic influence and to curses in your life. Here's number six, and that is pray a prayer of release from any curse, renouncing and breaking its power over your life. I'm going to lead you in that prayer in just a moment. And then number seven, replace the curse. So we're going to get rid of the curse. We're going to renounce the curse. We're going to break the curse, then replace the curse with the blessing of Abraham and continue to declare that we are blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Jesus became a curse for me that I might be under the blessing of God and the blessing of Abraham. So again, our scripture, Galatians 3.13, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for his written curse is he, is everyone who hangs who is hanged on a tree in order that in Christ Jesus, the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles so that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So we're going to do that here in just a moment. We're going to replace the curse with a blessing. And then eight, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to believe that we have received and go on in God's blessing. Now, when we pray this prayer, Mark eleven twenty four says, therefore, I say to you, Jesus said, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. So we're going to break the curse by faith. You may experience something. You may feel a weight lift off of you. You may, you know, have a physical reaction to the curse going off of your life. You may have nothing. You may feel nothing because we're going to do this by faith based on the promises of God that we have power in the name of Jesus. We have authority in the name of Jesus. We have the power of the Holy Spirit working with us. We have authority over all the works of the devil. Come on, we're going to exercise that authority and, and we're going to renounce and we're going to break the power of these curses. And then I'm going to pray a prayer over you of breaking, taking authority over any curse that might be on your in your life. Now, those of you who are joining me, we're coming to the end. I've been talking about, this is part two of breaking the power of curses, and I've talked about the signs, that indicators that we might have a curse in our life. In last session, I talked about the sources of where curses come from. In this session, I shared with you the different things that open us up to where a curse can actually land in our life and begin to be activated in our life. And now I've given you the eight different things that you can do to break 
curses in your life. And that was to confess your faith in Jesus and his sacrifice on your behalf, to repent of all your rebellion and sins, to claim forgiveness of your sins, and to forgive all who have ever harmed you, wronged you, abused you, to renounce all contact with anything occultic or satanic, to pray a prayer of release, which we're going to do in just a moment here, uh, from any curse, renouncing and breaking its power over our lives, replace where then we're going to replace the curse with a blessing, and the blessing of Abraham is going to come upon you, and you're going to go from curse to blessing. Come on, you ought to be getting excited about this point. And then we're going to believe that we have received freedom from the curses because if we ask anything according to God's will, he hears us. And if we know he hears us, we know we have the request that we make of him. That's 1 John chapter 5. So how many of you, come on, you can blow it up in the chat here. How many of you are ready to get set free from any curses that are in your lives? All right, so I'm going to lead you now in a prayer. And again, I'm not going to take the time. Well, maybe I will take the time for you to repeat it with me, or at the least you need to do is you need to say this out loud with me. Are you ready to go? And then, or you can just say amen over and over as I go through this prayer. When I get to the part where I say, I, where in the prayer, I'm going to say, I choose to forgive. If there's anyone that you need to release in forgiveness, that means you let it go. You, They don't owe you anymore. You're going to choose to forgive them. When I do that, I'm going to pause for a moment. I'm going to give you the time to forgive whoever may have offended you, hurt you, harmed you, abused you. All right? How many of you are ready to go? Come on, give me a thumbs up or something. Let me know that you're ready to pray this prayer. All right, here we go. I'm going to lead you now in a prayer to break the power of curses. So I'll, I'll say it out loud and then you repeat it after me. Say this, dear Heavenly Father, I come to you boldly in the name of Jesus and by virtue of his shed blood. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that he died on the cross for my sins and rose again from the dead. I thank you for your mercy and grace and for forgiving my sins. I give up all my rebellion and all my sin. And I submit myself to you as Savior and Lord. And now, I confess all my sins before you and ask for your forgiveness, especially for any sins that expose me to a curse. Release me now from the consequences of my ancestors' sins and iniquities. By a decision of my will, I forgive all who have harmed me or wronged me or abused me, just as I want you to forgive me. In particular, I forgive. Now, here's your chance to forgive. Forgive anyone, even if it's recent or way in the past. Let it go. You can do it because the Bible says we are to forgive those who do evil to us. So right now, choose to forgive. All right, here we go. I renounce in the name of Jesus anything, any contact, any involvement, with anything occultic or satanic. I cancel all Satan's claims against me. I shut every door to the devil. I resist the devil in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, I believe that on the cross, you took upon yourself every curse that could ever come upon me. And now I am blessed. You took my sins and I'm made righteous. You took my sicknesses and I am healed. 
You took my poverty and I am made rich. You tasted death for me and now I have eternal and abundant life. And now in the powerful, mighty name of Jesus, I receive my release and thank you for it. I pray this in your name. Amen. Now just lift your hands to the Lord. And as you lift your hands to the Lord, I'm going to pray and break any curses over your life. Father, as thee has have now renounced any areas of curses, any unforgiveness, as they have sought forgiveness of all their sins, Lord, I thank you based on their action right now. I command the breaking of every curse. We break, I break every curse over their lives, whether they curses that have from disobedience to law, curses from other people, cursing themselves, uh, curses that have come on them because they touched the occult. I break those curses right now by the authority of the name of Jesus Christ. I renounce, come on, I renounce all these curses on their behalf in Jesus' name. And now I release the blessing of Abraham over their lives, the blessing of God on them and their families and the generations after them. I release that now on them in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Man, I felt that one. I really believe that something supernatural happened when we prayed that prayer together. Make sure you send me some messages. I'll leave my email there where you can... Uh, email me or just put it in the chat and let me know, hey, I felt freedom. I felt deliverance. When I prayed that prayer, I, I just sensed something broke in my life. And again, it's not by feeling, it's by faith and by the fact of God's word. We have been given authority over all the power of the enemy. No weapon formed against you can prosper. Come on, you're going to tread upon serpents and scorpions because you are a child of God and you have power and authority in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Come on, somebody. Can you give God some praise? Let's just praise God for just a moment. Father, we thank you for delivering us. Thank you, for Jesus, for becoming a curse for us that we might not be under any curse, that you have set us free from the curse of the law and from the curses of the enemy. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, again, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click and share this video. Again, my YouTube channel, for those of you that are watching on YouTube, is Fred Kropp, K-R-O-P-P. And you can go there. Make sure you click the bell when you're there. Make sure you uh, click like when you're there. That way, other people will be alerted to uh, the videos that I posted there. There's probably 80 videos at this point that are there that are teaching videos. You can go back and watch them. So again, now in the meantime, I want you to know that God loves you, Jesus loves you, and I love you. Make sure you tune in next time. I'll be on next Thursday. Again, uh, we're going to be switching the time up to 7.30 p.m. instead of 6.30 each week. So I look forward to being with you again. God bless you, my brothers and sisters.